one of the best legendary skins that have been introduced in Rise of Kingdoms. I'm gonna go ahead and break it down for you in this video and I'm also gonna do a tier list for all the other legendary skins that are accessible from the Season of Conquest shop. Hello everyone and welcome back to our Rise of Kingdom video, I'm Legend Ronnie and today I'm going to do a tiered list for all the legendary skins that are available and the most important legendary skins because if we do look at how many legendary skins we have there is quite a lot so to do a tier list for all of them is not necessary especially that like five of them comes from the Osiris League and then we have Osiris Invitational and various other places and Zenith of Power, which many of them are not accessible. Once the Zenith of Power has passed, they did something in the past Zenith of, of Power where they did introduce some of the older skin, but pretty much once the Zenith of Power has passed, it's very, very hard for that skin that it will ever come back again. So the most important legendary skins that are in the game is the one that are accessible, like in the Season of Conquest shop. Stasmaster Rock software, the best data collection software for Rise of Kingdoms. You definitely want to go ahead and check it out. Make sure you check the description of the video as well for link and promotion so you can get a 10% discount. All the players' data, either from your kingdom or another kingdom, you can get your kingdom power within a few minutes. It also saves the data in Excel sheet, easily creates courses to evaluate KVK performance of your kingdom. And I can tell you that I have read all the reviews so far that I have seen and everyone is giving it a 10 out of 10. The requirements, you need a Windows PC, Memo Player, LD emulator. It even has a YouTube video that you can check how to install it. But it also has for Memu Play, it has for LD Player and from Bluestack 5. With graphics on the bottom, what exactly you have to do, how to set it up. So what are you waiting for? Make sure to check the description of the video. Use Legend Ronnie code to get a 10% off. You're going to find this very, very helpful and data collection is going to be much easier for you and your kingdom in the future. One of the newest addition to the legendary skins is the Dynastic Conqueror. This skin is, in my opinion, one of the best in the game right now. And obviously, I do have to explain it why, so I can make you understand. You get troops defense 8%, which, by the way, it is for all your troops. So including those leadership commanders that you're using on the field, like Trajan, for example, even that one is benefiting. Then you have commander experience gain 5%, and you get half cab attack uh, minus 10%. Any legendary skin that gives you negative on attack is one of the best skins to use, even if it's epic. Because in Season of Conquest, for example, you get a lot of all damage bonuses, you get a lot of attack from the crystal tech. So reducing the attack is never a problem. Obviously, in a rally, you don't want to do that. But for rallies, there's very situational, right? And there is just a few skins that are very good for rallies, and those are with health. Where this skin will mostly be used is field fighting and the best skin before this one came out in my opinion was the twilight falls which i was just showing it earlier the twilight falls like for three years was one of the best skin in the game because infantry take the lowest benefits from the attack in my opinion then is the calves and the archers benefit the most now the question you want answer to is why do I consider this skin to be one of the best for field fighting? In my opinion, in a murder ball, the most important part is the defense or how much damage reduction you have. Because the longer you last in a murder ball, the more damage you will be able to do. We all know that marchers get swarmed in a murder ball. Either it is your marchers, your friend marchers, your, your neighbor's marchers, whichever they are. They won't just go through your murder ball and just walk back and forth back and forth so someone is always getting swarmed in a murder ball now the problem is which one wins so the more aoe you have in a murder ball and the longer you are able to last in a murder ball the more damage output you will be able to do like for example even the small aoe that's why i always favor defense or defensive marchers with aoe capabilities such as Artemisia, such as Nebuchadnezzar, um, and various other marchers that we have that also have some defensive options, but in the same time, they can also deliver 
damage, AoE damage in particular. Now, defense helps you stay longer in the fight. It doesn't give you less severely wounded, so you still get severely wounded. But the longer you stay, the more time you can buy either for yourself or for your teammates to crush uh, your opponent's murder ball. Now, if you manage to crush your opponent's murder ball, then by nature you will do a lot more severely wounded to them, so you will get less severely wounded. So then, pretty much for field fighting, defense has a better role than health. In some situations, would be health, like if you're outnumbered and you're always getting demolished, but I mean, at, at that point, I don't think that even health helps you when you keep getting crushed and <laughs> demolished and so on. So this is why I consider now this skin to be one of the, the best skin in the game right now, because for fear fighting, 5% skill damage was before the best, because everyone is using mix, like, for example, even Trajan, right? Even if you look at the Trajan, even Trajan has a little bit of skill damage. So this skin was pretty much helping every march. Archer Cavs Infantry Leadership, which dealing a little bit of, of more damage. So the universal skin for three years and something, this was the best. And it still is very good, because hear me out, this Zenith of Power skin that now is the best is going to be very limited. So in order for someone to get this, you have to be top 10 in a continent. So let's say we have 1,600 kingdoms right now. Now, if you split that times 8, it's about 200. So there's going to be 200 continents times 10. There's about 2,000 players that will have access to this skin. So there's a very limited amount of skins that will be given away through the Zenith of Power. When this skin is going to come back again, nobody knows. Or how else it's going to be accessible, again, nobody knows. So this is the problem. Now, if you don't want to push for the Zenith of Power, my recommendation is that if you can't do 50 million power gain, just don't get disappointed. Either just go for it and whatever happens, happens. But if you really want to get it, because like I said, it's one of the best skins for field fighting and a lot of people will want this skin. There's going to be some huge power gains for this next Zenith of Power. So obviously, make sure you are ready and prepared to have what it takes if you want to go for it. But if you are not able to get this dynastic conqueror, this amazing city skin, I, I'm speechless that they ever introduced something like this, then the next best skin, in my opinion, is the Twilight Falls with a 5% skill damage, which is pretty much accessible to anyone because the Twilight Falls, you can now get it from the shop. When you go to the Season of Conquest, you have it over here, and for 650,000 coins, which by the way, as a personal advice, I do advise people going for accessories over than going for the skin. Make sure you have the amount of accessories that you really want before you want to go for a skin. It's a much better boost. The accessories give you an overall better boost than a legendary skin. But if you're really looking for legendary skin, this is the second best now that that skin has been released. Going further, it's all about if you want to be a specific calf player or a specific archer player. But the third best skin, in my opinion, is going to be the Top Capi Palace. Now, I know this one gives archer defense plus 10%, but it gives you troops attack minus 3%, which is very, very low for any kind of troops that you have. Minus 3% attack, that's almost a nothing and then it gives you a sweet five percent action points recovery which is a permanent boost this is definitely a very very good skin especially for free to plays because if you are a free to play you don't need any of this free to play low spender none of this because you're you're not being able to forge full sets of legendary equipment or you're not being able to get all your accessories done so why would you even get some of these blueprints if you're a free-to-play low spender? So definitely this skin is the best for free-to-play low spender. It's just that it gives Archer defense and a lot of free-to-play low spender, they tend to go with a lot of infantry marchers. So obviously make sure you're also using a little bit of Archers, you know, start making an Archer march. Trust me, you're gonna love it. Archers are beast in the game and they always have been it's just a lot of people have been neglecting them going further some of the fourth or 
the next best legendary skin that I would say is the Flight of the Heron because it has a negative infantry attack, which I already mentioned that infantry benefits the, the least from uh, attack. So obviously not a big deal. And then you get a 10% Archer attack and damage to Barbarian 5%. So this one is a very, very nice skin, which you can also get it from KVK3, the Divine Abode. It gives you resource production and it gives you calf defense, but it has one negative point. Infantry defense minus 10%. So if you do use Divine Abode, make sure you're not using infantry, because that will be pretty devastating. So this is for the heavy calf-focused players. Now, other legendary skins that we have, like the Persian Dream, I hope they will change this in the future because troops defense i mean an epic skin is better than this and healing speed three percent you will not notice even on a full hospital you will almost not notice the difference if you put the skin with a three percent hopefully it's going to be changed in the future and i don't know reworked because i think this is the worst legendary skin ever <laughs> the persian dream but anyway that's just my opinion now you do have to understand the classification of the skins from this video because I have to do the classification based on accessible skins because I cannot classify some of the other skins, right? For example, we have Atlantis, infantry help plus 10% obviously for garrison with infantry. This is a beast one or if you're just doing a lot of infantry for the field, this is a beast skin or many other skins that give health and various other stats. But I need to do the classification based on uh, skins that are accessible. So this one will be in the next Zenit of Power. So from this video until Zenit of Power is gonna pass, this is the, the number one. And after that is the other ones that I was mentioning. Because obviously if you get like a top four right now, if you get in the Osiris League, because now they are giving this skin for the top four, not just for the rank one, the troops training speed 3%, this is phenomenal. It also gives troops defense and whatever, that, but they have pretty bad uh, negatives. So obviously this skin from the Osiris League, they are pretty much just for, for training. Or some of the other legendary skins. Also the Man Mystery is a very, very nice skin. Cav attack minus 10% infantry defense, but this is no longer accessible. If you look, a commemorative team from the Osiris Invitational available to participants from the winning realm. So you can no longer get it. I had to do the classification based on accessible skins. Or for example, we have the Melk Abbey with 10% calf health, obviously. A must-have for calf garrison, calf rallies, or if you're just doing calves on the field. Definitely a really, really good skin to have. But again, not accessible because it was on the Zenit of Power. It was a limited edition Dragon Ball Festival City team during the 2020 Dragon Ball Festival event. So just as a quick re recap, Dynasty Conqueror to be the number one, the Twilight Falls to be the number two, the Top Copy Palace to be the number three, Flight of the Heron to be the number four, and then the Divine Abode to be the number five. So these are my top five city skins or city teams right now in the Rise of Kingdoms. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one. This is your boy Jerani signing off. Peace out, hell and take care. See you on the next one and stay safe out there, my friends.